So it's um, bang on eight o'clock. Okay. We have one, two, three, yeah, we've got a nice collection have arrived. Thank you very much for all um, coming on. Um, thank you for joining us. So for um, many of us, it's week five, six, seven of um, lockdown. Uh, for me, it's five, Sam, I think you're seven, aren't you, week seven? I am on week six. Yeah, lovely. I'm sure you guys all, all understand that we're all in the same situation. So um, as you also may know, um, because of the impact of the COVID-19, um, the team here has been really constantly considering um, how we can best use our resources to really support our families as best we can through these challenging times. Um, so this is where the webinars have come from. We've arranged a series of webinars um, including uh, Physio for Youngsters with Duchenne, a relax and chill session for parents and, and um, adults in the community. And uh, that's Monday. Uh, a mental health session will be coming up as well. So we also obviously have this fantastic session with Marina today. So all of our webinars are free. They are for everybody. Um, they, you can sign up for as many as you like. Uh, we also hope that they're fairly informal, as you can see, we're all having a bit of a chit chat. Um, I have put you on mute, but that's purely because of background noise. When we have more than four, two or three people, the background noise can be quite overwhelming for the speaker. So what we will do um, is I will run it so that we can take you off mute. Sam's going to take you off mute if you want to um, just pop a note in so can I speak. If you'd prefer to type, that's fine. But because there's only a few of us, I would suggest that we can just have an open chat if that's okay with you, Marina, and with you that guys. Sounds that sounds good. Very informal. Yeah. Very informal. Just ask a wee, ask anything. If I can't answer it, then um, we can find out the answer for that. <laughs> um, so we are recording today. I hope that's okay with no. everybody. Um, if not, please let me know. I'm happy to keep it back if you'd prefer for it not to be recorded. Um, there's no rules to say it has to be recorded. Just let me know either now or at the end. It's fine. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce Marina DeMarco, principal, this is such a long one, principal <laughs> neuromuscular physiotherapist at Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, Glasgow. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Spot on. <laughs> Very long term friend of Action Duchenne, decades of experience. Um, Marina had kindly shared um, the videos that she uses to help support her training for carers and family members who help support young people with Duchenne. Uh, with their movements so I hope you've had the chance to watch them if you haven't then obviously you can feast your eyes on our website go for it um, they're there forever they're not going anywhere um, if you would like me to send you a link separately I can pop it in the feedback form so thank you Marina we're so lucky to have you here and I'm just going to open the floor to you and let, let's go for it okay Thank you, Lynette. Well, thank you. It's, it's lovely to be here and, um, and be part of this community. Um, I think that, um, you know, Action Patient always have such valuable um, education and input and information. And it's, it's just great to be part of that. So thank you. Um, so Lynette had asked if I would start to kind of talk about exercise and movement. Um, so I'm really quite happy just to answer kind of any questions um, that anybody has. And I know that some questions have already come through. Um, we're, as, as we get older, movement um, becomes um, more difficult and more challenging when you have Duchenne. So when you're not able to move under your own steam, it's really important that you can get help um, to move with other people because movement is the very basis of our joints were made to move and if we don't move our joints um, then the, we, we don't produce what's called synovial fluid which is a fluid that is in between the bones it stops some um, it, it, it keeps some um, synovial fluid is full of, of protein and um, it's a substrate from the from the blood plasma um, and as we move our joints this protein um, gets um, pushed if you like through into our cartilage so movement keeps our joints healthy and when we don't move our joints become less healthy and you'll know that as you get older more people start to, in, in with all populations people start to complain of pain but um, we see that a lot in people with muscle conditions where they're not able to move under their own steam um, and 
also movement um, becomes more fearful as you get older because someone else is doing that movement for you and you're not in control um, of that movement and you're worried that perhaps that person would move your, your limb too far. Um, so there are a lot of um, issues surrounding movement. It's not um, as straightforward as, as many people think. If you've been the sort of person who, um, you know, is, is, has been doing movement for years, then you're on a winner. But many people, as they become less able to move by themselves, they don't particularly want others to do it for them. They become more fearful. And then when we start to try and introduce that, that's when we start to see a bit of, of anxiety. Um, but it's always about moving within your own um, range. Nobody will ever um, or nobody should ever push you into um, a movement that you don't feel able to, um, you know, to sustain yourself because you will become tighter. So it's not about trying to stretch out and make you less tight. It's about moving within the range that you have um, and that helps with pain. And it also has the long, the long term effects of being able to help with things like dressing. And um, if you're able to, you know, stretch out your elbow even a little bit to get a sleeve through it's much easier than if your arm is very very tight to try and get a sleeve over your arm so things like dressing things like washing and um, all of these things and um, become more difficult the stiffer you become so that's why in the adult um, population we do a lot of work on maintaining movement and reintroducing it again to those who have perhaps lost that movement um, so I don't know if anybody wants to kick off with maybe any questions, um, you know, about about exercise, movement, posture. Marina, shall I kick off with the question that came through on email to kind of get everyone okay. warmed up? Is that okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll read it as it's written. Okay. Uh, so my son, who is 22, has scoliosis, convex left cob angle. 69 degrees. Can you recommend any physio to relieve trapped wind? Also, he has a pain under his bottom quads and hamstring tightness. Just would like to check the exercise or stretches I'm doing are helping enough. And finally, he has upper airway secretions each morning due to the scoliosis again. Can you advise? So there's a few aspects there. Regan, in the kitchen is your packet of washing. Go and have it on top of the washing machine. Um, so those are my questions. <laughs> okay, so there's quite a lot going on there, um, and there are a number of different issues going on there. So yeah. let, let's start off with the first one. I don't know if the person who asked that question is maybe here, um, and if they even want to kind of ask because yes, when it's, it's you... me, it's me, Jenny. Jenny, okay, hold on, just let find you, oh, Jenny. Chip D, yeah. Oh, there oh, we are. Hi okay. There. Hi Jenny. Hi Jenny. Hi Jenny. Hi okay, um, if you don't want to answer any questions in, on this kind of public forum and the fact it's been recorded, it's fine. Um, but I'll, 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 um, I'll maybe just start off. I'll start off with the scoliosis question first. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, so um, with trapped wind, um, it's not always caused by the scoliosis. It can be caused by um, non-invasive ventilation. So I'm wondering if, if your son... Is if your son has non-invasive ventilation? Yes, it's nighttime ventilation. Yep. Okay. And is a trapped wind in the morning or through the night or sometimes first morning? thing in the morning? In the yeah. morning. Okay. So when you have a scoliosis, it's to do with the fact that the musculature um, has become very weak. So like the legs of the tummy muscles are a lot weaker. Yep. When you are on overnight ventilation and your tummy muscles are weak, when the air goes in, it's, um, we, we aspirate some of that air into our stomach because it's not all going into the lungs. Because okay. normally what would happen is if your tummy muscles are quite strong, there is pressure in the stomach, so the air won't go in there. But when the tummy muscles are weaker, it enables air not just to go into the lungs, but also to go into the stomach. And that is one of the biggest causes of trapped wind and it can be very, very painful. Mm. So one of the things that we have um, discovered, and it's actually, um, it, we've, we've looked at different things because we have a number of, of young people um, in, in our practice that also have, have this. So we need to think of ways of increasing the intra-abdominal pressure at night time. And 
if you don't have the internal musculature support, then we need to look for that support externally. And one of the ways we can do that is by looking at something like swimming trunks. Now, what some of our families have done is they've cut an aperture so that if you need the bottle through the night or something like that, you're still able to use the bottle. Mm -hmm. But around the stomach and abdomen, you have that um, kind of increased support. Like, so you would want it to come right up to the, the, the beyond the belly button, if you like. So you want trunks that okay. come right so like these like Lycra shorts or cycling shorts, something like that. That will give, that will increase the intra-abdominal pressure and it means that the ear will not get trapped. Oh, it can't get through. Okay. Yeah, okay. Into the stomach. So that has helped quite a lot of people. Um, but I would advise you if you're buying the cycling shorts or swimming trunks to cut an aperture just so that you're not trying to pull them down through the night. Oh to go no. The All right. Yes. Yeah. So cut out a bit because Good you don't point. need that part. Yeah. Just cut out the bit in between the legs because you don't need that. What you need is the part that goes around the stomach. And so the other thing that a lot of people use and have found to be very helpful is gripe water in the morning. Oh, so just right. the sort of thing that you use for babies. And mm -hmm. um, one of my colleagues was telling me that they were looking at this um, on an x-ray and they could see when the person took the gripe water, it actually started to break the wind up into smaller, into smaller chunks. And then it allows the person to pass that wind in a kind of more natural way. Okay. Oh, there's Brian just saying he uses Infocol. Gosh, I remember that from the past. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that, Brian. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you for that, Brian. Infocol. Do you know, Thank I can you. even remember the name of it. I was thinking of Great Water, but I think <laughs> Infocol is obviously the name. That, that yeah. was many years ago. <laughs> so, oh, right. Yeah, so that's one thing. The other thing that you can do is when you're in the morning is, uh, oh, 10 mils, well done you, Brian. <laughs> Brian's saying the ten mils four times a day. Brilliant. <laughs> See, I better write Thank that down because ten to the letter. <laughs> Thank you. It's very good to have that input. Um, so the other thing that you can do is before you get out of bed in the morning, is start to take to put your hand under the knee and under the ankle and then gradually move the knee up towards the chest and back just small movements right. because that also as you're coming up to the chest that also increases the um, abdominal pressure and that helps release the wind too okay so the, the info call the cycling shorts or um yep cycling shorts or swimming trunks whatever um, is, wow. is preferable and the movement as well all of those things will help with um um, yeah. the, the wind because right. that's very uncomfortable and can be very painful it's so and, painful yes i know and if you don't deal with it it's the whole day and then it puts um the boys off their food yeah. um yeah i know, yeah, I know. Whole thing. Yeah. yeah yeah so that was so that's the first thing is the is the the wind the second thing is um you were asking about pressure i think you said under the Hip, under the bottom and the back it's, of the thigh. Yes, in the wheelchair. wheelchair. Yes, when he's sitting okay. in the chair. Yeah. So, so when you have a scoliosis, um, if you can think of it, you come up like that. So you come over to one side. Yeah. And generally, we start to see pressure building up on the side that you're sitting heavier on. What I would do with that is, um, so the stretches of things are great, but it won't help with the pain during sitting, which will probably build as the day goes on. So right. the first thing you need to do is to have breaks. So even if you're just going up in the hoist and then back down again, you're allowing the blood and circulation to return to that area. Okay. Um, the second thing I would do is to contact your wheelchair services because it may well be that they can look at some kind of gel pack or something under that side, something yeah. to help redistribute the pressure because that's a very, when you have a scoliosis, um, and, it, and it's not, you know, a, a scoliosis of, um, I think you said 69 degrees, is, is, yes. is, is quite a significant scoliosis, so mm. you will be sitting heavier on one side. So that needs to be dealt with via wheelchair services, but also lots of breaks through the day. The yeah. other thing we do, um, does the chair have tilt and space in it? Yes. Um, what's oh. happened, just a little bit of in, um, We'd ordered a new chair to address all the problems with the scoliosis and this pressure point. And sadly, we had the lockdown. So we have the chair and we haven't been able to finish off 
all the cushions, oh, positioning. Cool. We're doing it ourselves. We do have a cushion that you can pump up, which we put underneath, just yep. to take that pressure off. Um, we're obviously using a Rojo cushion with pressure, but we, we're having to stick, you know, use the old wheelchair at the moment, if you like, while we're putting the other one together ourselves. <laughs> Oh, I really do feel for you because that is such a shame not having that um, kind of input. With the Rojo cushion, does it pump up on different sides? Yes. Okay, so the side that your son is sitting heavier on, pump it up a little bit more to push him yep. onto the kind of other side. Because if that side's softer and the other side is heavier, you're going to push him back onto That's the side. That, yeah. Oh, so you right, want okay. You want to have a little bit more pressure on the side that he's sitting on and a little yeah. bit less pressure on the other side so okay. that you're just helping to kind of, um, if you like, um, st uh, just kind of push them a little bit further over. But yeah. you really do. So the tilting space is absolutely crucial as well, just to yes. take the pressure off his bottom. So you really do need to make sure that he's using that often. Yeah, I hear it all the time. Click. Yeah, he's always Excellent. using it. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So keep, keep going with just your movements that you were doing in the morning, just put, taking the knee up to the chest and back down, making sure you're moving the yeah. knee as well. So keeping all that movement. But the, the problem in the wheelchair is really due to pressure rather than a tightness, mm. I think. Um, I'm really worried. Listening. Yeah, it's been worrying me. I'm keeping an eye on it. It's all fine. But okay. I can just feel the bone underneath. Yeah, I can just feel it. So he's sometimes okay. getting out and going in the bed and having a rest and then Perfect. back in. Yeah, I would yeah. definitely agree with that because he just needs to relieve the pressure on that side. When the bone is so close to, close to the skin, that is really tricky. And we call that bottoming out um, within yeah. the wheelchair. And it means that, you know, when you've got, um, because even, you know, even with, with spongy foam, when, you're, when you've got that kind of um, very bony prominence, it still pushes down and compresses the foam. So the foam actually ends up becoming even, you know, firm underneath. Firmer. yeah. Coming yeah. In, Coming out and releasing that pressure is really good. Okay. So thinking, coming out and um, you know looking at um, the actual cushion is is definitely the, the way forward with that. And then yes, thank you. And I think the last one was uh, circulation. The prefer no, was that right? Oh, what was I can't the remember. <laughs> because the um, he has airway, um, upper airway secretions. Oh, so in the morning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And again, for that. Um, we would do some chest physio and this is very very common most of our um, boys right. do have secretions in the morning and we would do some chest physio for that have you been shown any um kind of um, any kind of chest physio um yes i have a private chest physio obviously she can't come at the moment but she has shown me all the physio okay i mean what do it seems want... to be is nasal drip and then it sits at the top of the airway okay in the morning um, okay so um so it's it's about um, and, and again that can be caused by the ventilator mm. um, do, you, do you have um i mean it's very common it, most of the boys do have um extra secretions in the morning but i'm wondering do you have a humidifier with the ventilator yes yes okay okay yeah okay that's fine so i would be doing chest physio first thing in the morning um, and right. trying to make sure that you give them enough time to make sure that you're getting rid of those secretions yeah, it's been but better it's the last, last few weeks. The last okay. week it's been good, but sometimes we have a real bad patch and it goes on for about a week. Yeah. And um, it's like rhinitis as well. He seems to get rhinitis from the mask. Oh, Not I wondered if rhinitis. Mm. I wondered about hay fever as well. Is that an issue? Um, not, he's had allergy not tests, the swallowing tests, everything sort of to look at that, but it is a problem. Then it all goes away and then we think, oh, but we obviously, I check his oxygen level and I know when we've got a bit of a problem and I just do the physio. I've been taught by a private physio, which is really helpful. That's good. But, um, okay. That's, I know, unfortunately, that's the only thing for the, the morning secretions. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, to do that. But it's a very common thing, um, particularly on, on young people who are, are ventilated. It's a vent. Yeah. At night time, one of the reasons as well is that, um, you know, through the day, at night time, because you're getting these, um, you know, these bigger breaths, that's when yeah. the secretions do start to move. Um, through the day, oh. you're maybe not breathing as deeply. 
um, when you're in the in the chair. So the secretions are not getting moved up um, into the kind of upper airways, but we do start to see that in the morning because through the night with the ventilation on, you know, you're getting this expansion um, of the lungs. So oh, it does. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. So it's very very on. common. Very very common. He said, "Is it because I'm snoring, Mum?" I said, "Well, I do come and shut his mouth occasionally." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Marie. That's very kind of you. Very thank welcome. you. Hello. Do you have any other questions at all to ask? Sorry, I just wanted to ask Jenny whether her son had a coffices machine. Hello. Hi. Can you um, hear me? <laughs> yes. Um, Jenny, Jenny, do you does he have a coffices machine? I'm just. Oops. It muted, yeah. Thank you. Me now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. I just, just, I don't know what age is your son? 22. 22. Okay. So my son Tyron is about to turn 33 next week. Oh, uh, Linda, is that you? Yes, it is. <laughs> Hi, Linda, it's Jenny. Josh's mum. <laughs> okay, hello. Hi, Linda. Um, hi. I was just wondering, um, I don't know, I don't think a lot of boys do it, but with Tyron, whenever he uses the coffices machine, he does a shake at the same time, like a physio, yeah. like a, a, um, a real strong shake of the chest, yes. which helps to move, shift it up higher, and then obviously yeah. get it up. And I know Tyron has a tracheostomy now, so it's a lot different because we suction. But when he had a mask um, in the mornings, I would do physio for about half an hour and I would yeah. do it like on one side. He'd be lying on his side mm -hmm. and we'd be shaking his, um, his chest on the front and the back and giving it a real good, good old cough. shake. Yes. Yeah, to try and get him to cough it up higher to try and get it out. So yeah. I just wondered if that would help even with the coffices doing that and on the side. In he unfortunately the has a turning bed, so the bed turns him on the side, so I managed to stand on a stool and try and do the shaking. Because I'm quite short. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, thank you, Lisa. Just, just wondering, yeah, because a lot of boys don't seem, they seem to just do the coffices without the shake. And um, I think yeah. it just makes such a difference with doing that shake and quite a thorough shake. Um, yeah, <laughs> like beating them up basically, but yes, it's like under the shoulder that, blade yeah. and shaking. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what I've been yeah. doing. Okay, okay, yeah. it's just what it's like one lung's worse than the other, so that's why yeah. I end up with him on one side, one side more. Yeah, yeah, it's quite, okay. quite a military operation getting it sorted, but it does work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Thank I just you so to much, Linda. Yes, yeah, sorry. Linda, thank you so much. Lovely to see oh, you. Good to see Je you all. <laughs> Jenny, have you got any any other questions that you wanted to ask Marina before we, before we move on? I don't want to. No, no, no. I, I, I yeah. think I've had it. You know, I've had my share. Thank you very much. You know, it was <laughs> That's very really interesting. No, it's really helpful. The trunk thing and the the wind thing is just you know some days, mm. as you say, you just have a terrible day and you can't enjoy his day. So, I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, no, that's really helpful. Thank you. Eva's just put a question in. Um, what's the cushion called for sitting? And Brian, uh, who's our um, admin team in the background there, <laughs> <laughs> has answered <laughs> for for us, which is awesome. So you can carry on, Brian. Consider yourself hired. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the Rojo. Um, Linda, yeah. as we've got you off. Um, off mute. mute. Have you got anything you want to add or anything I, you want to quit ask? Yeah, I did want to ask um, Marina about sciatica um, <laughs> because Tyron has been struggling with this since just before Christmas um, in his right leg. Um, and the initial thing was to put him on strong doses of cocodamol and um, use a TENS machine, which we did for some time eventually we did get it referred to a physio and she came out for her first assessment um, on the bed and then the she was coming out two weeks later with the assessment in the wheelchair and then we had the lockdown so that's all oh. halted that um, but we did the exercises after she had shown us I mean we were doing exercises before what we what I sort of thought was best um, 
but they seemed to aggravate it. So then when I spoke to her, she said, just stop all the exercises mm -hmm. and see how you go. But I just wondered, um, at the moment now, they've, she's, the GP has prescribed cograbalin, which is also like a nerve pain yeah, to try right. and de deaden the yeah. nerves. So, yeah. But he is still struggling a bit with that. I mean, some days are better than others. Okay. When, um, when does he um, complain of it most? Is it when he's lying down or sitting up? Um, I, it, I mean, he, some mornings, I mean, as soon as he wakes up, he'll have cocodamol straight away every morning because it seems to be sore in the bed and even in the chair. It doesn't seem to be. Okay. Some days okay. are better that once he's had a cocodamol, he won't have until the evening again, but then other days, times it's a bit more often um and the progabalin where he's mainly only having at night now not in the morning as well okay so if when when you were talking about doing exercises was it like a lot of movement or was it a, a stretch or what, well, what, were you, what were you doing what we were doing before the physio came is like lifting his right leg up sort of to his knee to his um up towards his abdomen and mm -hmm. then um also sort of twisting the knee over his body to sort of try and stretch it a bit on the side mm -hmm. um and we were doing exercises like that she um just said to do more just gentle movement up and down mm -hmm. of the leg um mm -hmm. but it doesn't I, we sort of she just said stop all the exercises when it's sort of aggravated but um it might be something that we need to introduce again. I'm not sure. I would, I would definitely um, start to introduce, but introduce kind of very gentle movements. Yeah. The other thing that I'm wondering is um, the fact that it's um, sore when he's lying down and also when he's sitting up. I'm wondering if it's partly positional as well. Um, so I think definitely start to introduce the movement again. But okay. um, when um, in bed, uh, the, so the pregabalin is a is a is a pain is a pain um, medication for nerve pain. So, yeah. um, so is that helping? Um, I think it has helped. Yeah, I think it has definitely eased it off now because we went through a phase of him having quite a lot of the cocodamol, and now it's sort of dropped down a bit. So, okay. Um, okay. yeah. So this would be a good time then to start to introduce a little bit more movement. Once you're once you're over that kind of initial kind of acute phase where it's sore, no matter what you do. But yeah. now I would so I would start to introduce the movement again, and okay. then I would start to think about um, positioning in bed. How does he lie in bed? Yeah, because he's got a tracheostomy. He lies mm -hmm. flat on his back, um, pillows under his knees, and pillows on under under each arm on the side so his arms are propped up um yep. yeah okay. and pillows under so, his so knees and his his leg rest is also up raised at night when he okay. settles yeah so with the pillows under his knees do his legs still kind of go out to the side or no they they stay they together healthy? that's yeah. very good okay yeah and um, then he has a cushion for his feet to get the um ankles off the um the bed. His okay. heels oh, off the bed. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really good, actually. Okay. Um, and how 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 long would he be lying like that? He would stay in that position. He normally settles. It's quite late at night, though. About say half past one, two o'clock, and then he would stay like that till he started his routine about nine in the morning. Um, but he will in the night get his move legs moved and okay. adjusted okay. and yeah. okay so you're doing everything right there's nothing else and um, and is and is he comfortable on the mattress so you've got him positioned really well but from yeah. a pressure is, is he's got um uh, air pressure mattress okay. air relieving okay. mattress so i think he's fine i think yeah yeah, yeah. no i agree with you that sounds really good but the exercises um, that you would do would be what we were doing sort of raising that knee up towards the abdomen or up towards yep uh-huh yeah and also um the back movement as well is, in, is okay. important. So it's bringing it all the way kind of back down to the bed um, okay if you know, it's not just about pushing up it's about bringing it back bringing it well. back down yeah okay and then yes. also with the knee you know you really want to try and move the knee as well knee. so moving okay. like so the knee you know if, if <laughs> the best way to I know it's so the knee joint so if the knee okay. joints like that, you want to just kind of try and straighten the knee out a little bit. Out a bit, I mean, yes. It probably doesn't go completely yeah. straight, yeah. you know. 
yeah so it doesn't go really, straight yeah yeah so you're really yeah. just wanting them to kind of gradually just kind of yeah ease it out okay okay yeah. no that's lovely so all right the and the knee movements yeah. and um and in the wheelchair during the day what is his position like um he's got he's got um we've got now the elevators his leg elevators that the wheelchair services have put on that was just recently done at just before okay. christmas so he can lift his his legs up as well and move them uh, and he tilts okay. he has the tilt and, in space and yeah and, so are his thighs fully supported does the seat depth fully um, support the whole length of his thighs or is there any gap you know from the back of his knee to the seat uh not much no it's quite because okay. what we would be looking for is maybe just a couple two to three finger breaths yes. so that his thighs are being fully supported okay so, that's yeah yeah it is about that yeah 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 and our knees in line with hips or do they come out the way what, what happens with um so he has got from when he had scoliosis um or oh, some years ago he had spinal surgery when he mm -hmm. was 13 okay. um so his spine was going, it was about 45 degrees when they decided to do the spinal surgery. Um, so his, because of that uh, scoliosis, his left hip dislocated. So that doesn't sit properly in the socket, I don't think. I mean, it's a lot. Okay. It's yeah. not as tight or anything. But um, so when he's in his wheelchair, he tends to swivel himself. And I think that's because of his back. Yeah. Um, so that his left knee is further forward and his right knee is back more. And he seems to be more sitting right up on the right cheek more of his butt, butt, butt and up. Is it the and his left leg is up and hip is a lot higher up. Yeah. Okay. And, so is his and is it the left side that is painful? No, it's the right side. <laughs> okay, I, wonder if they, well, I wonder if he was actually trying to lift the left side. Okay, so he's sitting yeah. more on the on the right, and I just right, wonder right. if it's more that more of the pressure and the weight is going through that right buttock. But yeah, when we be. tried to pull him over so that he's more level, um, then his body sort of falls over to the right. Um, if we pull his bum cheek more to the right, his body then because he's not balanced, and so he sort of falls over. So that's how he sits to be yeah. in a. So that that in as straight as possible but he is rotated yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it's that rotation that's that's the issue i think, I think um, so yeah oh, so and I, that's a difficult one because he's doing that because he's uncomfortable yeah um, and he can't balance either exactly oh, it really does need to be yeah. um wheelchair services that look at that um that look at his sitting position um, yep. his, his positioning at night time is very good it's good um, yeah i think and the yeah. physio that was when she was about to come out and do the assessment in the wheelchair when we had the lockdown so we had to cancel all the appointments so so that's why that hasn't moved forward now so um yeah <laughs> but yeah and well, i try to get him to sit straighter but he he can't because then he can't drive the chair and it just yeah, throws his whole balance out of off balance he's, yeah he's really needing he's really needing some um really good wheelchair input there um, and yeah. because it's definitely to do with that position through the day and the problem yes. is um function all it's one of the things that we see all the time function always wins over posture so if yeah. you have someone perfectly positioned but they're not functional in that position they yeah. will change their position in order exactly. to make it more functional. Yeah. 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 So um so just now is he able to come out for um a, a session through the day back into bed for a little while even? Um he can do if he wants, but he chooses he like normally it. to stay in his chair all day, he likes oh. to be up and about, he doesn't like to be in bed until later. So oh. yeah. Because that that's a long time to be in that position. It is, yeah, yeah. I mean, his routine is is about three hours long in the morning, so he is only in his chair from about twelve o'clock. It's not. Um, so there's maybe twelve hours he's in his chair. Uh, he's back in, gets in back in at nine o'clock, so oh, okay. from about twelve to nine, it's about nine hours. Nine hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's still, it's still quite a long time. time. And if you were yeah. able to, I know that he probably doesn't want to because as soon as you go back into bed, you're not. Bed. You're not able to yeah. move around, um, yeah. but it's it's just trying to break that yeah. that position. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely introducing the movement now is. A good I think we need to start, to start doing that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's lovely. Thank you for your help. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks, Linda, for the question. Um, Linda, was there anything you. else you wanted to ask Marina while you had her at your fingertips? Uh, no, I think that was my main my main um, concerns, really. So okay. I'll let everyone Thank else you. have a turn. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Um, I, I do have one that came in via email, and um, unfortunately, the, the parent that asked the question um, hasn't been able to come online tonight. So I will ask the question, if you okay. wouldn't mind answering it, Marina, for her, and then I can obviously share this with her, if that's okay. So yes. um, are there any particular leg or foot exercises that might help improve peripheral circulation um, her son's beta blocker, while necessary for cardiac issues, reduces circulation, particularly to toes. It's only really evident when showering, but obviously is ongoing invisible issue. There's no pain or other symptoms with feet, which would warrant urgent cardiologist review, but they're going to discuss it at the next visit. So she's looking for leg foot exercises to improve circulation. Yeah, Thanks. so, so circ circulatory problems are very, very common in Duchenne. And um, part of the, the reason behind that is, oh, my, my phone is just telling me that I'm on, um, I'm going to have to, to, to put in my charger. We've <laughs> um, got a little, a little musical interlude. This is where we get Sam yeah. to do a, yeah. do a song or a dance. Right, or... Let me, charger's on. <laughs> I'll probably, actually, I'll probably just hold it now. Um, we get to see your swishy office, Marina. Sorry? We get to see your swishy home office. Well, you're going to see a lot of a lot of boxes and stuff in the back. I don't even know what the best place to put this. I'll maybe just hold it actually. Um, okay, so um, circulatory problems are are very common, and um, and it's not just because of beta blockers. We have many um, young men who are not um, particularly on beta blockers, but they still have um, circulatory problems. Now, the issue um, in the shower chair. And that's when it seems to be most noticeable. Again, it's quite a common thing. And we, we sometimes see that because in the shower chair, the legs are dangling and the feet are not properly supported. Um, and, and sometimes the shower chair can go and um, can catch under, under the kind of thighs as well. So the circulation down the legs isn't as good because the chair is, tends to be harder. So it doesn't enable a good circulatory flow to the periphery. Um, because the shower chair obviously has holes in it so that the, the, the water goes through and some people do have padded shower chairs but the padding is still not the same and doesn't hold you in the same position as your wheelchair would. So the shower chair can be problematic um, and, then, um, and then the feet can be not properly supported, the feet can be dangling and um, when we see feet dangling um, again it means that the circulation is getting to the periphery but it's not being returned back up to the heart. We also see this in some people, um, with, and it's also associated with edema. So we can see puffiness in the ankles um, and in the feet, um, um, just because that peripheral circulation is not so good. So there are a number of things that we, we can do for that. Um, the, the first thing is, um, we, bringing the circulation to the feet is, is one issue, but the big issue is actually getting it back up to the heart again. So. When you come out of the shower, it would be good to have his feet up, his feet elevated, um, and that might be have to go back in bed because usually first thing in the morning when you know, you've been lying in a nice position, your feet have been raised, your feet are a lovely colour. But we often see as the day goes on, I've seen some people's feet navy blue and purple by the evening um, because that peripheral circuit is this, what we call pooling of blood. We don't have the muscle tone to send that blood back up to the heart. So when we're walking, um, every time your heel goes down, the muscles at the front of the leg contract. And every time your toe goes down, when you're pushing off, the muscles at the back of the leg contract. So walking through the day is what we call a muscle pump. So the, this, this contraction, relaxation, sends all the blood back up towards the heart again. So you don't get that pulling. But when there is a lack of movement and when you're sitting all day, we're more likely to see that, that pulling. So there, there's, as I say, there's a few things we can do. So the first thing I would do is when we come back out of the shower is to maybe get the legs elevated so that the feet are up. And that gives the circulation that boost to get it back up towards, towards the heart again. The second thing you can do is um, passive movements and it's wiggling the toes. And again, I've got um, on my um, 
passive movements videos for the lower leg, you will see me doing the, the bending and straightening of the toes and of the ankle, circling the ankle and then bending and straightening the knee. Then you might want to go back to the toes again, start again, bending and straightening the toes, pushing the ankle up and down, circling the ankle and then moving the knee again. So we really want to get that circulation back up towards the hips. So the movement, so one is elevation, two is movement. The third thing is um, that we can do is compression. And some um, boys who maybe have the circulatory problems with the oedema might choose to wear things like the flight socks through the day. So that um, if you think back to what we were talking about with the muscle tone in the abdomen and how the uh, cycling shorts or swimming trunks can give you that intra-abdominal pressure. It's the same with these, um, the, the flight socks. So even a couple of pairs of flight socks, um, one on top of the other, just to give you that kind of um, elasticity in the morning, putting them on just helps the, the circulation as well. It just gives you that bit extra muscle tone. Um, so that's another thing. Um, the other thing is, so the compression, we can also do compression with massage. So massaging, this is what we call effleurage, starting from the toes and pushing all the way up the back of the leg, all the way up the front of the leg. Massage um, is, is also very helpful. Um, and if you do the kind of massage with some, you know, moisturiser, because often with circulatory changes, we also see skin issues. The skin can become quite dry. Um, because the circulation isn't the, 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 the superficial circulation isn't supplying the skin and um, so we start to see kind of skin dryness and also often we see young men don't tend to drink enough and um, again maybe because they're, they're worried about having to go to the toilet or it's such a hassle to go to the toilet so it's easier if you don't drink so again the kind of lack of drinking and this loss of the superficial circulation we start to see dry skin so massaging some kind of cream um, and from the toes up towards the the um, the knee, and um, will also help with that. So elevation, either back in the bed, or if you can sit with your legs up, and um, if you've got the elevating leg rests, or you can even put your feet on a chair with a cushion underneath. But make sure it's not just the feet that are on the chair. We want the whole lower leg to be supported. So if you were putting the feet on the chair, I would put a pillow underneath so that the whole of the lower leg is supported. And um, so elevation. Um, movement, start with the toes, ankles up to the knee. Uh, compression, either in um, massage or with um, with uh, just you know with your hands, uh, with your with, with the massage or with the um, flight socks would all be things that you could use for that. I've also got a leaflet on the Scottish Muscle Network website that talks about edema and circulation. So that might be quite good. You can download that. Um, that one. Um, so if you go into the Scottish Muscle Network, um, the Scottish Muscle Network. If you Google Scottish Muscle Network, let me just kind of have a quick look on my own computer actually. Um, go into patients and families, and then under other useful information, there's um, a host of leaflets. And this one is called Edema Management, but it's not just edema. It's edema and circulation. It's just written up there as edema management. So is that, is that Thank you, Marina. Do you think um, there's anything else that we've missed in that section for that for that parent? Um, um, I don't I think so. No, I, I think the shower seats, shower seats are particularly challenging. And also remember, you know, you've got the hot um, shower going on to the legs, and the circulation is slower. So you're not, and you're not getting that movement back up. So we do we do see issues in the in the shower with the the feet change, color change in the feet. Do you find that I'm, I'm really interested in the massage side and I know that there's kind of conflicting discussions about massage with, with Duchenne. Um, we use, I just use olive oil with, um, as a carrier oil for frankincense because mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. that's nice for the skin. But I wonder if you had any kind of personal kind of recommendations for, for what you no, would do. It's interesting because olive oil is, um, is something that, that I would use as well. <laughs> you would, okay. Right. Yeah, I'm and the frankincense is okay as well. Do you think? I just... Well, if he's not got any, um, it, people are, are a bit worried about. Um, I mean, I'm not an aromatherapist, um, no. and people do get a bit worried about using different um, aromatherapy oils. But okay. you know, if there was a reaction to it, you would see that on this on the skin. 
Um, some people have particular smells they like, like they would use rosemary and lavender, for example, maybe if they're doing it at bedtime, so you've got that nice smell. Um, some people don't like oils, they don't like the smells, mm. um, and some people would might react to them as well. Um, so I think okay. use whatever. You know, people use creams, Nivea, all sorts of things. But um, yeah, I like you, I would use olive oil, actually. Thank you. So would anyone like to take the floor and ask a question? If you feel more comfortable writing it, that's fine. Um, but uh, if not, you can just obviously let me... Oh, there we go, Sue. Um, Sam, would you... I have, I've unmuted. Thank you. Oh, he hello. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Sue. Hello. This is Dan. Hi. <laughs> Hiya. Um, we're just wondering about um, the, the thing that Dan has the most issue with, with at the minute is his fingers and his hand. Um, okay. And then his hand, the using his controller on is obviously a lot more curled than the other one. And that's quite, that's quite too like writing and typing. Um, and you seem as though you're spending a lot of your time with your hand like this. And it was just wondering what, we have got some stuff which sort of you can wear over the day but if they, they sort of fit you know it's it's can can stop his movement really so it was just if there was any it, yeah it is quite hard so and again we have got access to everything. just something to do that we you know when we're at home okay so the Moving the fingers um, again is really important and regular movement through the day because um, Sam, you might find that you can move them a, a little bit, but to actually get them to the end of range is more, no. is more challenging. Yeah. So keep moving the fingers. And yes, I do agree with the splints, but the splints are, um, are, are challenging through the day as well because it means then that you can't do anything when, when the splint is on. Um, but it is a good thing. To, I mean, I would always advise people to, you know, whenever they can, to put them on, even if it's for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just to, to give that sustained stretch. Because we talk about um, different kinds of stretching. So we talk about this kind of static stretch, and that would be a static stretch that you would get from your splint. And that holds the kind of fingers in a more extended position for a longer period of time. Then you've got that kind of active stretch, maybe when your mum's moving your fingers out, taking them to the end of range, and that's moving all the joints, keeping the joints lubricated and um, looking after your muscles too. So um, so there's different ways that we would stretch and it's good to use a combination. Um, if the fingers are, are really tight and that's inhibiting the joystick, um, the other thing that you can do is, um, I don't know, have you spoken to wheelchair services and uh, uh, about any particular different types of joysticks? Um, and we, we don't have a very good track record with wheelchair services, so we ended up buying our own chair after a charity buying one for us to begin with. So it's got a boulder chair, which is um, they don't make anymore. So we managed to get another one. So we're cannibalising little bits and adding on. But um, wheelchair services... Daniel had a seizure and um, they wanted to adopt his chair and we, we'd got to the point where we were going to have the chair adopted by them but they said that if he'd had a seizure they would have taken it away anyway. Oh, so um, we, we really haven't been involved with wheelchair services for a long time so okay. he's got quite small, we've got quite a kind of, oh, uh, quite a small joystick on it. Oh, uh, can sorry you that see? was my hand. That's your hand, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. So it's, it's whether or not we'd, we'd, we'd wonder about something bigger or I don't know. So um, you can get all, I mean, uh, actually, believe it or not, some people use even smaller joysticks than that. Like, um, oh, right, okay. Yeah, kind of like mini joysticks and some, you got all different kinds that have maybe got like a um, kind of, um, uh, a, a kind of a hole in it, not a hole in the top, but a, a dip in the top that you can use one finger um, and right. they're more sensitive that are, uh, variety of different joysticks out there um the, the problem is they won't all be compatible with the boulder with, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I you really do need yeah you really do need specialist advice on a on a joystick and um, i wonder if wheelchair services would maybe um you know, kind of i don't know be they willing to give some advice we, now just difficult because i know in some areas uh the really quite really good, good but unfortunately the area we're in they're not 
So good. Back is good. <laughs> we've just, we found, we've had so many times of going and we could, the chair that he's got is a tilt. It, um, it you know, it's up and down. It's a standing chair. He, you know, he has, oh, a, has a range of movement. Um, and the, there's nothing that can provide that would give the bit that he, that he, that he needs. But I mean, we, we can go back and ask again. Yeah, we're just wondering, happens, yeah. really. Um, it might be worthwhile going back and asking again. But the other thing that I'm just thinking about is I'm wondering if, um, so I know they don't make the boulder anymore, but do you have someone who um, maybe, uh, um, like, uh, who would service that chair? Who would oh, yes, we, oh do. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. Yeah, we do. And, yeah. well, you know, they have, they add bits on and we haven't, right, we okay. haven't who can add bits on, you know, so we just, I, it's, it cannibalised the chair now, yeah. isn't it? Well, if it's if it's a wheelchair supplier, they might be able to even bring out some joysticks for you to try. Yeah. I mean, there are so many. There are buttons. There are all sorts. Is it worse when your hands are cold and then, you know, it, it makes it harder to move? Yeah, or is it, just, is it just general movement on the joystick? Like, t I, I don't know if I always struggle necessarily with moving it. It's more like it's not actually necessarily moving the gaze stick. It's like lifting my hand off the gear stick and back on yes that's and when i'm driving yes. into a table i can't like lift it off to turn it the off. power off <laughs> so that i don't drive into the table or, yeah so it's, it's those yeah, sorts it's, of things it is actually the up. fact that sometimes his hand it's harder to take something off than it is okay okay oh. so that that really is that's that's a, a, a more of an issue you know with muscle strength not actually being able to lift your hand back off um, and yeah. so you need to get your hand placed so something um yeah, it, it, it might be, you know, maybe something like um, like a button or, you know, something that you can have. I, I think a different, a switch system, I think something different is needed um, that would take cognizance of, of that issue. But it would really need to be a specialist service. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, I don't work in your services, but I look oh, to see what no, no. you have. It's really just looking at, these are the, these are the spins, so... Sorry, they're like um oh dear, they're like yeah, they're a like a, soft yeah. Print. And um, I think the most difficult thing sorry, about them is actually when them on. is getting them on <laughs> and getting your hand in the right position. Yeah, it's like yeah. do you put the fingers on first, or do you put yeah. the arm on? Or, yeah, and it's just yeah. Yeah, but it's more so, that it's, it's what to do with this. It's good that you've said about the. The static and but then the moving the fingers and things we'll just try we'll just keep trying yeah yeah, yeah. just and the split those are good splints um i i like them and um yeah and um you're right about get yeah, once do some movements first and then and then just kind of ease the fingers into it and once you've got the fingers then you can line up the kind of forearm uh, because if you put the yeah. forearm part on first, then it's more difficult to try and get the fingers. So the, the fingers are the most difficult part. So line them up first, and then you'll you'll get the forearm. Okay, thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. You're welcome. And has that answered your question, guys? Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. thank you. Yes, yeah, we haven't done anything like this before, so. <laughs> Brilliant. Your room is a fabulous background, by the way. It's like, oh. yeah, it's fair. I think everyone's like, yeah, that's very nice. <laughs> We're so, um, pleased. so pleased we've got it because there's lots of light. It's a nice place to be when you're stuck in. Lovely. Very nice. <laughs> so, um, one, we've had a question. Well, it was more of a um, kind of, yeah, it was a comment. I just wanted to let you guys know. Um, Catherine um, said, um, about recommending resources for um, safe exercise in the ambulant population. Um, uh, just to have obviously replied to that, but also just to say that we have got Marion Main also running um, five more sessions to do with um, the ambulatory um, population. And that's uh, next Wednesday is the second session. Um, so I hope that's okay, Kate. If you give me a nod, if that's okay, and I'll be in touch tomorrow with the recording. If anyone else wants, needs the recording for any reason, let me know as well. Um, so next we have um, Florence, who is our national director. And Florence has said, Marina, we appreciate regular exercise can help to improve heart and lung function, joint range of movement and reduce pain. Are there any thoughts in particular for young adults to help maintain the muscle bulk or bone density? 
So what we would say is that any movement is, is good movement. Um, any movement, um, whether, so when it's, when it's um, under your own steam or whether you're doing passive and passive assisted movements, um, I don't know if, if this is if I'm on the right track, but let me know um, if I'm answering the question properly. Um, when we're looking at um, the movements, there are lots of things that we can do. And some people don't even realize that things like going out in your powered wheelchair, when you're going over bumps and you're going around corners and you're actually steering the chair out and about, you're actually working all of your core muscles, um, and, but you're also working your breathing muscles as well. So even um, going out in the wheelchair, you, you'll hear many young men actually saying that if they go out for the day um, or go out even for a couple of hours, go out shopping and they're in their powered chair, so they're maybe driving themselves into their minivan and then they're coming back out, they're driving around shops and then they're going back home again, um, that they're really quite tired and you're thinking, well, why am I tired? Because I've been in my chair. But what you don't realise is that sitting up is still an exercise that you're engaging your, your, your trunk muscles with. And when you are going over bumps and um, you know, going around corners and different things, you're, you're working your trunk and you're working your head control. Um, and it can be quite tiring. And also your breathing changes. So even going out and about in a power chair is a form of exercise um, and something that we would recommend. We recommend any movement. When you're not able to do the movements by yourself, we would look for help with a carer or a parent or someone to do the, the movements um, with you so that you're moving through your full range of movement. Um, but all activity is good. Um, and it's whatever activity that, that you can manage. Some of the boys um, go to things like wheelchair football. Um, and that is a tithing. That can be a really tithing session. Um, they do boccia. Um, there's different, in, in, in um, Scotland, we have the Scottish Disability Sports um, Forum and um, they run, you know, like different um, uh, kind of, um, uh, like, I don't know what, what kind of, um, like different sessions, if you know what I mean, that, that, that are all for, for working within a wheelchair um, and they're a good um, forum to get in touch with. And I don't know what, what in England or um, in Wales um, or Northern Ireland that would be similar, but I'm sure that um, each area has its own uh, kind of disabled sports forum that you can get in touch with as well if you're liking team sports and things. And also the social part of that is really good. So anything that you can do under your own steam, um, you know, all forms of play, all our, our, our exercise, um, hobbies, anything at all that you're doing, going out and about. Some people will even tell you, um, some of our older adults, things like um, getting in and out of um, of the the shower in in the sling, they're changing, they're altering their breathing pattern, and that in itself is an exercise. So anything at all that involves any form of movement or any form any change in your breathing pattern. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Marina. Thank you. So I think was there anyone else that wanted to ask? Any questions or wanted to add anything? Brian? Oh, Brian, sorry, Brian, how can I forget? Brian said for two, two points. So the first one is that he's got a really good soft touch joystick. So I think that's for you guys um, in, with the atrium. <laughs> um, so maybe you guys can connect and um, perhaps you can share, Brian, your info about that. Uh, we've also yep. got from Brian, uh, what's the benefit of using the Ambu bag for helping secretions? Please. I've okay. so I just wanted to be able to shave it as well. Probably yeah, oh, have, okay. So the Ambu bag, um, so the Ambu bag is very useful in a number of ways. Um, for, um, we tend to use it as our kind of um, first um, move into into uh, before you would even use a cough assist machine or anything like that, we would start with an ambu bag and, and you don't even need to be on ventilation or anything like that at, at night time. We would start off using the ambu bag and we start to see a drop in, um, in the ability to like take in a big deep breath. So when your respiratory muscles are a bit weaker, um, taking in that big deep breath um, becomes harder 
So if you remember what I was saying about if you can't like move your arm through its full range of movement, um, you can maybe your muscle will move to there and somebody can maybe help you go the whole way. You're getting that assistance. It's the same thing with your lungs. So you might not be able to take in that big deep breath, but if you have air pushed in with the ambu bag, you can take that full breath. So that means that you are opening up the ribs. One of the, the issues that we see with many of our older population is the fact that they're not, um, or, or they haven't maybe been doing enough of taking in this big deep breath. Um, and um, because our ribs have a lot of joints um, in them, I can't remember, there's over like a hundred joints within the, our full rib cage. So all of these joints have the synovial fluid, they need to move. And when we are breathing normally, we're moving these, um, these, these um, ribs all the time. But in order to move them through their full range, you need to be able to take that big deep breath. Now through the day, we all take big deep breaths. Um, but when you, are, um, when you have that weakness, in your chest muscles, you're not able to get a full breath in. So the ambu bag gives you that bigger, deeper breath. You're pushing that ear into the lungs and you can either do it segmentally or you can just do one big breath as you're breathing in to take that ear in. So that's, one, that's when we would start off using it. When you're on um, ventilation, when you're on BiPAP overnight, the BiPAP is set is set at a certain kind of tidal volume. So you're taking in breaths in and out. We would still use the ambu bag then because the ambu bag is still giving you that bigger, that bigger breath. And um, when you take in a full breath like that, you are then, you have a longer breath out and it's that breath out that helps to move the secretions into the upper airways and to help you get rid of those secretions. So when you take in um, a, a few big breaths with your ambu bag and then you do that long breath out and sometimes what well, um, you know um, some of you were talking about shaking doing the shakings earlier on. The other thing that um, we tend to do more of now in our area is compressions where you're when you're breathing out you're actually pushing the rib cage in to get that bigger movement. And it's the rib cage movement that helps to move those secretions up because the air gets in behind the secretions. And because you've got that long breath out, it's pushing them up into the upper airways. So the ambu bag is very good. The ambu bag is more portable than the coffices. The coffices is great because it, um, the ambu bag gives you that positive pressure, that air in, as does the coffices. Coffee cyst has the additional value of giving you that negative pressure, which is pulling that air out. Now the ambu bag doesn't do that, but what the ambu bag does do is it give, it's portable and it gives you that big breath in. So when you still have that ability to exhale and maybe you're getting a little bit of compression either on the top of your chest or on just at the side of your rib cage, when you've got that, um, that ability to kind of push in and you're getting that bigger, longer breath out, you're moving those secretions into the, the kind of smaller airways that you can usually just cough them and get rid of them. Is that what you were looking for, Brian? Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Marina. You're welcome. Anybody else um, have any questions? Mm. I'm looking on my screen, any hands? No, I think we're good, okay. Thank you so much, Marina, for coming on. No, thank you very tonight. much, thank you very much for all those. That was a really nice variety of questions. Um, and I think, well, you know, it covered a lot of ground. So thank you all for, for sharing all of that um, information. I think that's really helpful for everybody else to hear as well. And Brian, thank you for all that information. I know. <laughs> yeah, fabulous. <laughs> Um, brilliant, Brian. Before Thank you all go, um, I, before you all go, um, you're all incredibly hardworking people. Um, we have um, a relax and chill session for adults in the Duchenne community. Whether you're a parent, a carer, whether you work in healthcare, whatever you do in the Duchenne community, we have a free relax and chill session on Monday at eight o'clock. That's with a relaxation coach. Consider it a reward for all your absolute hard work please join us if you'd like to have the link i can send that to you um afterwards um i'll just um drop it in the feedback form we also have a mental health and emotional well-being session coming up soon that's about resilience that'll be tackling 
depression, how you feel in um, lockdown, how you can cope with coming out of lockdown, uh, which is something that, you know, I think it's going to be a really interesting thing to tackle. Um, so look out for those dates as well. Um, and please look out for the feedback form. I want to send out all your amazing feedback on the session from Marina today because I want everyone to see and to hear this, um, to hear how amazing Marina was. So please take time to even just give us a, a, a you know, five minute worth of your typing. Um, I'm really grateful for you all joining online tonight. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you thank so you. much, Marina. Marina. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.